I'm Joel Aldrin, and this film is about advertising. The reason I'm here is because I feel pretty strongly about the contribution advertising makes to the strength of our country. Now, as you know, advertising means different things to different people. And here's a good illustration of what I mean. Now, a word from Ford. Did I miss anything, dear? Just the commercial. <laughs> the old man got wrapped up in it and really liked it. But the old lady left the room and never did find out what it was all about. Now, there may be others like the old lady, and we'll have a talk with them a little later on. But right now, let's change the subject and see what electricity has been doing in your life during these past 20, 30, 40 years. I was just trying to get into the mood. I guess we all remember these things. Above all else, the Gershwin years were years of change. Our nation was stirring with new ideas, new wants, new needs. We were building a better way of life, and we had a powerful force to help us, electricity. Companies like General Electric were finding ways to use electricity, to light our homes, do our work. One of the new things that came along was General Electric's famous monitor top refrigerator, remember? The electric washing machine took the gloom out of wash day. And the vacuum cleaner eased another chore. Appliances appeared for every job. New electric service the wage earner could afford. America was changing in other ways. We had more leisure time and more things to do. Remember the old crystal sets? If you opened the window, you could always get chilly. Or you could hear red hot rhythms from General Electric's experimental station, WGY. Then General Electric developed a loudspeaker and better radios, and all America began to listen to voices that came through the air. The Flickers found their voice, too, with the help of a General Electric invention. We were a restless nation in those years, busy people on the go. We built taller buildings, thriving cities. Our nation grew and prospered, and electricity helped us in all these things. Electricity and the dedicated men and women in companies like General Electric. It's no wonder, then, that in the Gershwin years, these initials came to be known as the initials of a friend. You know, it's funny how we take things like electricity for granted. Here in a single lifetime, it's brought us radio, television, electric refrigerators, easy to use vacuum cleaners, and hundreds of other things. Not just for a wealthy, privileged class, but for everyone. Perhaps we have to look at scenes like those to realize how much our lives have changed in just two generations. Those bright lights and big cities had a lot to do with it. As a changing nation, we were moving away from the farm and closer to those lights and to new kinds of jobs. And there were new kinds of stores and businesses and services. More new people wanting more new things and more new things to sell and new ways to produce things so a man could produce more in fewer hours and make more pay. And back on the farm, there were new kinds of machinery so that one man could do the work of others who had moved on to the city. Back in 1920, it took one man on the farm to feed every 10 people in this country. Nowadays, one man feeds 40. One man does the work of four, and the other three move on to new jobs. And that's the way it's been in our country in many fields. Today, half the jobs we now have didn't even exist 30 years ago. Half our jobs are new kinds of jobs. Today, our country is spending 14 billion a year on research and development. 14 billion a year. And out of this research and development will come more new products and more new jobs. From Rocket Research, a great new cook and serve ware made of an amazing new material that defies heat and cold. Brilliantly beautiful. Here now in new Corning ware. So heat proof, so cold proof, it can stand empty over hot flames, then go sizzling hot into ice water without damage. New Corning ware can go from the freezer direct to high heat without breaking ever. Use Corning ware for broiling and every type of cooking. Comes with detachable handle, and in its handsome cradle, it's ready for the table. 
So you can freeze foods in Corningware, cook them over direct high heat, and serve them all in one dish. You'll find a wonderful selection of skillets, saucepans, percolators, and now the new Corningware steak platter, teapot, roaster, and royal buffet. Give remarkable, beautiful Corningware. People might be inclined to say, so what? So they invent a new product like Corningware. Maybe it does make a hundred new jobs. What of it? Well, let's talk about what of it. President Kennedy's Secretary of Labor, Arthur Goldberg, has stated, we must create 13 million new jobs in the next 10 years. 13 million brand new jobs. And the economists tell us those 13 million new jobs and the 65 million old ones are all to rise in income. Maybe we don't realize it now, but the average family income, non-farm, has jumped 50% just since 1948. Average 1948 income, $4,000. Average 1961 income, $6,000. And a higher rise for lower incomes is still to come. Why is this? Because our country is moving, and has been moving for 20, 30, 40 years, from an economy of scarcity to an economy of abundance. An abundance for everyone not just the wealthy privileged class. But let's get back to Corningware. And say it had been invented 20 or 30 years ago. And suppose like certain cookware of that time, it was sold house to house. And someone would ring your doorbell and be a personal salesman. It's fine. Except that today it would cost at least $5 for every sale that this salesman completed. Who would pay for that $5? You, the customer. And what if Corning then only sold 10,000 units instead of a quarter of a million? Well, it's pretty obvious each unit would cost more, and you, the customer, would pay that extra cost. The mathematics are fairly simple. The more that can be produced, the less it costs per unit. And the lower the cost of making the sale, the less you, the customer, pay. And this is where advertising comes in. As this new kind of economy has developed in America, a new kind of salesman has been needed. A salesman who wouldn't cost $5 to ring your doorbell. One that didn't talk to just one or 10 or 185 people. But one who would talk to 185 million people. And why? To sell more products at lower cost to help create new products and services, and more new jobs. From the infinite universe of matter and energy, Union Carbide creates many things for the good of man. His electric light bulb contains argon, a gas that keeps it burning. His shower curtain is decorative, waterproof plastic. His suit contains chemical fibers that keep it looking better, longer. His car is made stronger with metal alloys and protected with all-winter antifreeze. He works in a building of gleaming alloys where he sits on plastics, writes with plastics, and talks through plastics. Back home, his wife keeps things bright with cleaners and polishes created by chemistry. And in the evening, a television program tells of the wonders coming from nuclear energy. Then to bed, with a flashlight handy just in case. Now, he may not know it, but all these things, the gas in the light bulb, the plastics, the chemical fibers, the metal alloys, the antifreeze, chemicals in the cleaners and polishes, the flashlight and its batteries, yes, even the nuclear energy. All these and many other good things come from Union Carbide. Through continuing research into the elements of the universe, hundreds of new and better products come to you 
under trademarks known in countless homes and industries, the trademarks of Union Carbide. That's advertising. As a nation, we discovered the more different jobs that can be created for 185 million people, the stronger our economy. Also, the more taxes we can pay to a free government, fighting for its life in a half-free world. Taxes we know come from jobs and wages, from the manufacture of products and profits, from the day-to-day -day movement of money in circulation. And quite simply, every dollar spent in advertising generates many dollars in taxes. And let me repeat that. Every dollar spent in advertising generates many dollars in taxes. And this is something many people do not understand. Irresponsible writers and critics don't comprehend this. They're living in the past, or they belong to another part of the world. Times have changed, and the factors behind our economy have changed. Since the Great Depression of the 30s, this new kind of economy in America, with the help of advertising, has created more than 25 million brand new jobs. In the next 10 years, it must create 13 million more. This is a new kind of economy. This is a new kind of America, with more for more people. One of advertising's jobs is to bring you news, information, an understanding of this new world around us with its new products and services. Does advertising cost? Of course it does. Who pays for it? You, the customer. And while advertising is telling you its story, it's performing still another service. Advertising pays the major expense of publishing 10,000 newspapers and hundreds of magazines in this country. And advertising pays all the cost of radio and television. Advertising pays these costs for a very simple reason. It is the least expensive way to sell. Except with the help of advertising, no manufacturer could afford to pay $5 for every sale a salesman made with 185 million people. Since you, the customer, pay the sales cost in the end, this is important to you. To ring your doorbell, a full-page ad in one of America's leading magazines costs less than half a cent per family. And for less than another half cent, the advertiser can talk to your family for one minute on television. How elegant. The most elegant cake of all. Chiffon, now dramatically different. New deluxe vanilla cream chiffon with an exotic new taste. It's vanilla, cream, and a French flavor secret. Tantalizing. Yours in a new mix. New Duncan Hines Deluxe Vanilla Cream Chiffon. Here's everything you'd expect of a Duncan Hines Deluxe Mix. A cake so elegant you'll want it for your most glamorous evenings. This chiffon is high and angel light with a moistness all its own. Taste it. Every tender bite is soft, smooth, creamy glowing with an exciting flavor new in a cake. Vanilla, cream, and a French flavor secret. Try new Duncan Hines Deluxe Vanilla Cream Chiffon. Duncan Hines, delicious. That's advertising. Telling you about one of 3,500 new products in the supermarket, new in the last 10 to 15 years. Now that's one of 107 mixes now available to help the housewife with her baking. The Department of Agriculture will tell you that most of those 107 mixes cost you less than a penny a package more than if you'd bought all the ingredients and made them from scratch. Some actually cost you less, in fact, because of research, competition, constant improvement, the forces of advertising. This year, American food companies will spend $150 million to improve nutrition, convenience, and variety in your daily menu. And you, the customer, win in this competition. Competition in free enterprise has changed our lives for the better. And advertising is what keeps this competition key. Every week, from 50 to 100 new products are launched. In many stores, a new product has only two weeks to prove itself. If it isn't what the customer wants, out it goes. If it doesn't sell, 
out it goes. If it cannot give sound value against competition, out it goes. Only the best can survive. And only you, the customer, can make the final decision. Advertising's job is to tell you what's available, where you can buy it, what it will do, how much it is, and why it's a good value. All advertising can do is hope that you'll try the product once. And from then on, it's up to the product, and it's up to you. Onions. Onions. Flavor. Onions. Work. Onions. Waste. Onions. Tears. Not anymore. No. Durkee's Instant Minced Onion. In a box? Pour and use. In anything? Just like fresh. Flavor? Just like fresh. Durkee's Instant Minced Onion? No work. Durkee's Instant Onion. No tears. Durkee's Instant Minced Onion. What'll they think of next? If you don't see it in the store, ask your grocer. That's advertising. Now, if the product isn't all that's advertised, you'll never buy it again. This is important because it forces the advertised product to maintain a reputation. And any time it fails on quality or value, it loses you and your business. Now, that isn't true of an unadvertised product because it has no reputation to maintain. And it isn't true in the case of an advertised product that only seeks to sell you once. But let's make no mistake about this. There are quacks and charlatans who misuse advertising and destroy your confidence, just as there are quacks and charlatans practicing law or medicine. The Federal Trade Commission finds borderline problems in only 3% of its investigations and has to investigate very, very few advertisements. Now, you probably wouldn't be surprised if someone told you that 3% of lawyers or 3% of doctors were unethical, guilty of illegal practice. But this doesn't reflect on the good doctors and lawyers that exist or the good work they perform. The point is, don't make the mistake of blaming all advertising and the contribution of good advertising to our economy just because of the errors of the few. Certainly, advertising must continue to rise to its total responsibilities in our economy. In two generations, the American public has become more aware, sophisticated, discriminating, as well as more intelligent. And so is advertising. The Navy has learned that the child of four and a half today has the awareness of a child of seven 20 years ago. The Navy is interested in the young man of 18 to 24. He's smarter today. He's hip. Once upon a time, the Navy played anchors away and waved the flag to attract his attention. <laughs> but nowadays, the Navy talks like this. Kind of lonesome. Yes, but I'm awfully glad he did. Enroll the Navy officer candidate school, you mean? Yes, OCS. Lots of liberty? Oh, yes. Good food? The best. Education and training? Mm-hmm. Best thing he could have done. Enroll the Navy officer candidate school, you mean? Yes, OCS. Kind of lonesome. Yes, but I'm awfully glad he did. <laughs> That's advertising, going out of its way to interest you, entertain you, reward you for your time. For instance, in Duluth, Minnesota, there's an American Italian who decided he had a better way of making American Oriental foods. And what's more, he decided to can these Oriental foods and sell them in nearby states. So to tell everyone about it, he had to advertise. Now, he thought you'd have fun enjoying his chow mein, and he has fun telling you about it. You ever notice the way nobody ever says anything in elevators? Face the front of the car, please. <laughs> you know why he says that? Habit. We're all creatures of habit. Food, for instance. What are we all going home to tonight? Spaghetti and meatballs, right? Potatoes, lots of starch. Face the front How of the How about a little variety once a week? Some light oriental dish, like, like chow mein. It's delicious, filling, but not too heavy. Face the front. Face the issue. Would it hurt any one of us to try a little chow mein tonight? Break the American food habit. Probably some tasty canned chow mein you could pick up at your grocer's. 
course, it's up to you. <laughs> Don't let me influence you. I got no axe to grind. Phew. Takes all kinds, huh? That's advertising. You know about 70% of the things you buy in a supermarket today, you choose entirely on your own, without even a clerk to answer your questions. Advertising must answer these questions in advance. It must work for that small advertiser, as well as for the large one. It must use television, radio, magazines, and newspapers for the local as well as the national advertiser. It must keep our competition keen, and competition must stir even more research and development to create new and better products, and in turn, new jobs and higher wages, and, let's face it, more taxes to keep the American government ahead of its competition. It can be done. With average wages to reach $10,000 in the next 10 years, it means better schools and education, better hospitals and medical care, in the last 10 years, the dollars for schools and hospitals and government services have more than doubled from 25 billion to 54 billion, paid for by taxes from you and me and American business. There's much more to be done, of course. We still don't have enough schools or hospitals, but as the economy grows, so do the tax dollars grow. And this growth must continue these next 10 years. Those 13 million new jobs must be created. And right now, the promise looks very good. Something almost unbelievable is going on all around us. It's the beginning of a tremendous construction boom. New construction in the next 10 years will be worth more than all the buildings now standing in the United States. It will take $670 billion to do the job. Underway right now, the world's largest office building, Grand Central City in New York. They're tearing down and rebuilding a square mile of St. Louis, a billion dollar plan. Pittsburgh's fantastic new auditorium with the world's largest roll back roof. Century City in Los Angeles, in one spot, enough new buildings to hold more people than many cities. Florida, the Miami Herald builds the world's most modern newspaper plant. Denver, Colorado builds its brand new courthouse square. Seattle, Washington, another new building rises in Seattle's new 10 acre metropolitan center. And Westinghouse, just one company, has a construction and modernization budget of $75 million a year. We're building a new Space Age electronics laboratory in California, a new transformer plant in Muncie, Indiana, and 14 other buildings to keep up with the pace. This is the new face of America, and hundreds of new Westinghouse electrical products will help make it an easier, better, more efficient place to live. You can be sure if it's Westinghouse. The man said, new construction in the next 10 years, worth more than all the buildings now standing in the United States. And he might have added with it, 15 million new homes and apartments, houses of new materials, structural plastics, glass and new forms, aluminum panels, your home air conditioned for half what it costs today. Advertising's job? To tell you about it to run the want ads for 13 million new jobs and 65 million old ones, to bring you news, information, facts, and understanding you demand, and at less cost than if you answered your doorbell. One more job for advertising. It must continue its responsibility to remind us of our responsibilities, to buy U.S. savings bonds, to support CARE, Radio Free Europe, the Red Cross, to help Smokey the Bear prevent forest fires, to aid the many other projects that help to make a better world. Last year, the people in advertising, newspapers, magazines, outdoor, radio and television stations, gave $240 million worth of time and effort to these public service causes. And why? Because here, advertising must be your conscience like cake mixes and cookware, electricity and minced onions. These were things you had to be sold on. He too would like someday to dance and leap and run. But 
he will not. This child has cerebral palsy. What is cerebral palsy? Brain injury, damage to a part of the brain that sends orders to the body. An arm is crippled if it receives no messages from the brain. Contact is broken. A leg that can't receive orders is useless, or it may destroy sight, hearing, speech. This is cerebral palsy. The cruelest multiple crippler known, and it strikes every 53 minutes. You can help. Join the 53-minute march on cerebral palsy. That's advertising. I wonder what it's doing to your life.